And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Chuck Muth. He's the president of Citizen Outreach. Um, Chuck, in uh, today's Las Vegas Sun, uh, there is a story from Anthony Ramirez uh, who talks about further education cuts spur fear of lawsuits. Uh, Mo Dennis, who will be the chairman of the Senate Education Committee next year, uh, adds one word to that, which is litigation. He said if the legislature cuts too much, somebody will probably file a lawsuit and we're going to lose it. Um, he said, with my household budget, if I don't have any money, I cut back. Why can't go? If we do that, we get sued. We don't have a choice. Your thoughts? Well, this is a major problem that we, we've been facing for a long time uh, as a nation, um, it, it, where the federal government can come in and dictate how we run our house and how we run our, our business here. And it's a, it's a state's rights issue uh, that I think has become a little bit more, uh, maybe not popular, but the, the, the public, especially because the Tea Party movement has made such an issue of this, is going to be a factor in, in all of these issues coming up. Now, th th this whole thing about the education and spending, we've been hearing about these lawsuits, it's usually used as a threat to try to scare people uh, into approving more spending and higher taxes. Um, f sooner or later, the state's going to have to say enough. You, you can't keep forcing these unfunded mandates down our throat and telling us that we have to do this, that, or the other thing without the funding. In this recession that we're having, the money just isn't there, and the cutbacks have to be made somewhere. Uh, if it's not education, it's the prison system. If it's not the prison system, it's health and human services. Sooner or later, somebody's going to have to say enough is enough, and, we're, and we just can't comply with these federal mandates. Brian Sandoval coming in as governor and his no new taxes pledge. Uh, does he put himself in a similar pol uh, position that Jim Givens put himself in, which is essentially the legislature just takes over? Uh, I think it, I, I think the way the Sandoval administration is going to handle its relationship with the legislature will be very different. But I'm happy to, to see, and I hope that uh, Governor Alex Sandoval uh, it keeps his pledge to take taxes and fees off the table. The only way that you will ever get government to retrench and shrink is if you take the ability to raise taxes off the table. Um, even during the, the past three years, where we've had the worst recession in, in memory. Uh, it has been like pulling teeth trying to get the government to actually shrink itself. There, it, it, we actually raised employee, government employee salaries. We gave them a cost of living uh, increase of 4% in 2008, right in the middle of this recession. Uh, there's been no layoffs, massive layoffs, anywhere near what we've seen in the private sector when, when they had those problems and they knew that they had to, uh, to make some serious cuts to make themselves healthy. Government will not shrink itself unless it's forced to, and that is why it is so important for the governor to take tax increases off the table. Now, will the legislature try to overrule him uh, or override him and take his budget and uh, increase spending and increase taxes? They may, but I think they're going to have a little bit more of a difficult time doing that with Brian Sandoval. The reason they got away with it with Jim Gibbons was that he was so so bad at dealing with the legislature and so bad at communicating uh, with them and with the public that I, that I really don't think that Sandoval is going to have that same problem. Uh, Chuck, speaking of Governor Gibbons, of course he'll only be with us as, as our leader for another month or so. What will his legacy be after he leaves office? Boy, I'm, I'm not a historian. I, I can only tell you from, from my standpoint, it, it's going to be opportunity missed. Um, from a conservative standpoint, Jim Gibbons did all of the right things in all of the wrong ways. Um, it, you know, he, he took the position of no new taxes, but he did it in such a way uh, that he, he flip-flopped on it. He put that $292 million room tax increase in his budget, uh, and that, that kind of undercut his moral authority to, to speak on that issue. People called him on it. Um, he did oversee a state budget uh, that was just decimated by economic uh, uh, economic. A collapse that, that he had nothing really to do with. I mean, no, no elected person in this country really uh, uh, could have foreseen how bad that was. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. But again, a lot of the things that went wrong with his administration, Ray, were unforced errors. He shot himself in the foot so many times it just wasn't even funny. Now, Chuck, we all know too that uh, Bill Raggio of Reno is no longer the Senate Minority Leader in the uh, legislature. Some people were shocked, but Others, did you see this coming after his uh, tax vote in 09, his uh, run against Engel, his uh, tax vote in 03? What do you, were you surprised at all that this happened? Well, 
There had been talk, there has been talk about replacing Senator Raggio for a, a number of years, at least five or six years, maybe seven or eight going back, but it's always been talk. It, it was, who would actually challenge the king uh, like that? And even after the tax votes, there really wasn't the vote there, um, there wasn't the figure there to challenge Senator Raggio, especially in his, his final legislative session. What the game changer was, him so publicly coming out in favor of and endorsing Harry Reid. That gave the opposition an opportunity with something that was very easy to see. Um, it was a soundbite that as a leader, you just don't do that. If you're a regular old state senator, fine, you endorse Harry Reid. There's not going to be too much of a, a penalty to be paid for that. But when you're the leader of the party, um, and, and you endorse the Senate Majority Leader, the Democrat, the top Democrat from the other party, that gave people the opportunity to, to then take a look at, well, maybe we, we can replace Senator Raggio now. Uh, the only person really who probably could have pulled that off was Senator Mike McGinnis. And even he would not have been able to do it if it hadn't been for two conservatives, Elizabeth Halseth and Michael Roberson, winning their races in Southern Nevada. That gave uh, uh, Mike McGinnis the two votes that he needed to get to six in order to be able to pull it off and as long as those two you know, stuck with him then you would get Gustafson and, and Settlemeyer uh, to go along and, and of course Senator Sagavsky and that gave him the six votes and, and it was really that uh, it, there were a lot of reasons maybe to replace Senator Raggio the tax and the spending issues but it's, it was something that no one really foresaw coming that endorsement of Harry Reid that finally really did him in. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much Chuck we appreciate it. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this time.